Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another episode. Today I've got a bit of a bit of a treat for you all. I'm over in the northeast of Italy, a small town called Asolo, and we're here to go and see the ins and outs of the city cycling shoe factory. So here we are. We're at the city head office and factory. Pretty cool building. It doesn't doesn't just look like a whole load of waves. This design is meant to mimic the mountains just up to the north of here. Everything south of here is completely flat, but if you head up into the north, you head up right up into the towards the Dolomites, the foot of the Dolomites. You've got Monte Grappa and stunning cycling in the summer around here. Basically all your cycling apparel if it's made in Italy is is around this kind of region. One of the main reasons I've come through here today is um, if you have a look at <laughs> this picture here, my very beautiful feet, um, I've been getting a little bit of pain on the knuckle of my second toe um, while, I'm, while I'm riding, doing the long rides. And basically what we've figured out is one, one or two of my feet there, my second and third toe, are sort of slightly rubbing up against the edge of the, the shoe, which means that Basically the feet are doing that and then it's rubbing on the top of the knuckle of, of the feet. So what we're looking at doing is adding just two or three millimeters on the side of the shoe there just to give me a little bit more space so that the feet can, can relax forward and they aren't, they aren't basically curling up and then rubbing. Just looking back here over the years, I think this was a, this, this was a special edition shoe I think we did back in 2015, 16, uh, I think it was. Same with the blue ones. There's some some pretty cool cycling history in in here. All right, quick change of clothes. Got to be got to be wearing the right right brands around here. So yeah, no exceptions. This is the start of the production line. This is what forms the shape of the the shoe. So this is the very beginning of of the shoe making process, and then from here, it will go into its uh, little tray and it stays on that tray all the way around the production line all the way until the end when they remove this part when the shoe's been completed this is one of the most important parts i think of the of the shoe making process here you've got basically the, the sole of the shoe being attached to the to the upper part so this is really the machine that makes the form of the shoe so all these different parts here have to hold different temperatures for, for the glue to be able to set at a, at a certain temperature so it doesn't uh, crystallize or so it sets properly. This machine is really sealing the upper part of the shoe onto the form of the, the shoe. Obviously the machine's helping to do the sealing process but everything's being controlled by hand and put into place by a person. It's not all just put into a machine and stamped off. It's all being done by hand and uh, being controlled. You can see after it comes out of the machine, he has to make sure everything's, everything's sealed properly. Over here, what they're doing is they're taking the, the shoes that have had everything molded together on to, to make the form of the, the shoes, but by hand, removing all the excess off cuts. And then for the more fine stuff, they're putting it into the big machine there, which really just polishes it and uh, grinds all the excess material away. Over here on this station is where the shoes are being prepared to have the carbon sole stuck to them. I guess it's a free glue coat onto where the, the carbon sole is going to stick to the shoe. So over here we've got one of the final processes of putting the shoe together. You can see this machine here it uses a few tons of pressure to, to basically to, to stick that sole, that carbon sole into, into place. From here it goes around into a little, into basically a little fridge 
to lower the temperature and start the crystallization of the glue. These are, these are some of the shoes that I'm using just being made. This is now a final product. This has just come off the production line. It's had its quality check. This is now ready to be packaged up, sent upstairs and shipped out to the suppliers. shoes have been finished downstairs on the production line. Um, they come up here and they're uh, packaged up. Everything over there is uh, packaged up ready to go overseas and uh, everything on this side is for the local market here in Italy which will go out to the local shops, the local suppliers. But yeah, the, the bulk of all the shoes being packaged up over there and ready to be shipped overseas all, all over the world. There's a fascinating story behind the, the factory here at City and the whole, I guess, the family, the family business, how it evolved over the years. And it's, it's all thanks to, to this man who we just met downstairs there, Signore Dino. He's a special character for working in a, in a shoe factory from the age of 11, 12 years old. In his early 20s, he started making, making investments and his own ideas to make his own shoes. He started his own factory in 1960. He started City. At that point, it was, it was hiking shoes and a few years later, skiing boots. He, he had loved cycling all through while he was growing up. He was working in the factory. He was riding his bike at three o'clock in the morning so that he could, he could get a few hours in before hitting the factory floor. Um, cycling was his passion. In 1970, he started producing motocross, motorbike shoes. And because he was working so hard, he was no longer cycling. I think he got so engrossed in, in, in building, building his own uh, shoe brand, he put on a lot of weight. And in 1973, he said, right, that's enough. Um, I'm gonna start riding my bike again. But back then there weren't really great shoes. I mean, they just introduced cleats onto the bottom of shoes. Um, in, in the 1970s, and, but you were fixed. You were fixed in the shoe and you weren't able to make any adjustments in terms of the, the angle of your feet. So what he said is, I'm gonna build my own shoe um, that you can, you can adjust the cleats. And that was, that was this, this shoe here. In 1973, he designed the titanium because of the titanium plate underneath here but the, the sole is, it, it was all leather. This is a leather sole, leather, uh, comfortable, breathable outer, 50 odd years later, and uh, vast contrast in, from, from the original all through to what, what, we're, what, what we're racing in today. But yeah, basically he came up with a, a system of, of being able to change the cleats, and from there, uh, his first model of shoe became one of the, the market leaders.